Hey there, how the devil are you? If you are a parent who is struggling to get through to your teenager or to your child full stop, then you have come to the right place. My name is Kai Graham. I am a parenting spe specialist and I am author of The Teen Toolbox, which is a best-selling book on Amazon. Um, it is my mission to support you parents so that you can help your children through adolescence so that together we can build a mentally healthier and happier generation of young people. Now let me just tell you a little story. Do you ever say something and it, it sort of takes the wrong meaning or it, it's, you say something it doesn't come out the right way or it doesn't have the desired effect? Alice, my daughter and I were, we, we'd had a spa day or a whatever, I can't even remember what it was, um, but we had both had, a, I think we'd both had a massage and then we both had our hair done and we'd just had a nice time and we came back home and um, we were sort of sitting there just sort of, you know, recounting the day and Mike walked in from work and he looked at Alice and he went, oh, nice hair. And I sat there and he went, what? And I went, I've had my hair done as well. You never mention it. Whenever I come back from the hair, you never mention my hair. And went, oh God, sorry. And I kid you not, three days later, he came in and he, I was sitting at the kitchen table and he gave me a kiss and he went, I think you need your roots done. And I just looked at him and he went, what? You see, I had said to him that he never mentioned my hair. And bless him, he tried his best. And three days later, he did mention my hair, but not really in the way that I wanted. But can you relate to that? Do you say some things that your kids sort of never... You know, I told you to be back, you know, after a party. I told you to be back the next morning. Well, yeah, I was. Well, no, you weren't. You got back in just before 12. Well, it was still the morning. No, I meant about nine o'clock. Well, you didn't say that. Yeah? So let's see how we can start changing things. Let's see how we can change our language to the better so that we are not having misunderstanding, so that we are not having um, misinterpretations. Because I tell you what, when you have a disconnection from someone, it leads to secrecy, it leads to arguing. Oh, you never mentioned my hair. It leads to dis disrespect, it hurt feelings, isolation, disconnection and lack of the right communication. Just that's when the cracks start appearing in family life. In, listen, in life in general, let's face it. But sometimes we say things, even though we don't mean it, it comes out the wrong way, and then it just leads to hurt and upset. So number one, follow these steps. I, I am going to refer to notes. Avoid using absolutes, like always, never, everyone, because they're fine when they're true, but when thrown away it's sort of at lib, um, they can be very, very damaging. You know. Why why didn't you take the, the, the why didn't you take the rubbish out? You're so lazy. You're always yeah, it's always me that has to remind you to do things. Oh well actually Granny phoned up and she needed me to help her with her printer and I was just going to do it after the conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay. But when we tend to use universals and absolutes, we tend to distort things and, and it becomes very accusatory. You're so lazy. You always do this. You never, no one ever listens to me. Sorry, what was that? Do you know what I mean? And, and it can, you, can, you can say things that might, are, are, are usually not always true um, because universals 
are, you know, they, they are very, they polarise your comments very, very quickly and they lead to resentment. Also, I mean, language is a funny thing, isn't it? And we have to remember, we have to remember how to use language to the best of our ability. And our unconscious mind does not process negatives. It just doesn't work that way. So it's, and I don't, you know, because I, I remember uh, uh, another time we were running, we, we were, went on a long walk and there were about 15 kids and um, we were um, running sort of down the edge of a field and I said to um, Jack, now don't tread in the cow path. I mean, what was the point? He did in a spectacular fashion. Because if I say to you, don't think of a pink elephant, well, what do you have to do? Your brain has to conjure up the image of that pink elephant so that, oh no, that didn't work, did it? So our mind does not do negatives. So when I said to Jack, you know, don't tread in the cow pat, his brain was going cow pat, cow pat, cow pat. And it's a bit like, don't run. <laughs> run, run, oh, run, 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 run. So we have to watch out the way we use language and remember that negatives ain't actually that easy to deal with. We need to, we need to focus on the, you know, could you just, just come and walk slightly more slowly because then that just makes me not fuss so much. Or just come this way because it's quite muddy on that side of the path. Does that make sense? Because it's a matter of what you're putting on your child's radar. I do remember um, one day, I think my kids must have been, and this is just, just, this is just how to use language in a better way, is that I was, oh, at the end of my tether, you know, one of those really sort of hard work mum days when the kids had just, it was hard work. And I think they were about four and six. And I was at the end of my rope and I was just sort of saying, well, you've got to go upstairs and why don't you this? And you're always that. And oh, you're driving me mad and shut up and just get upstairs. And Mike came in through the door. And God, all my stories are Mike just coming in from work, aren't they? Um, that was then and this is now. Um, and he came in from work and he just took one look at me. And I think I was possibly, I just looked fit to be tied. And the kids were sort of, we were all screeching in the hall for whatever reason, you know, welcome to the Waltons. And um, he said, what's wrong? And I said, they just, won't get, they just won't get up to bed to have a bath. And Mike went up to Alice and whispered in her ear. And then she just disappeared upstairs. And then he just did exactly the same to Jack. And I just looked at him, I said, well, what on earth did you do? And he said, I just said to each of them, I bet you can't be by the bath first, ready. And, and, and they did, and they ran upstairs and they took their clothes off and they ran downstairs and they were ready. And yet he had just used, he just reframed everything, reframed the language rather than shouting and yelling. Because I tell you what, when someone's on send and not received, you're not going to listen to them. So why on earth should the kids? Yeah? So Mike just turned it into a game. First person to go and stand by the bar is going to be the winner. Don't even think he offered a prize. I just think the very fact that they were going to beat their brother and sister was a bonus. Always seek positive reinforcement. And that's, you know, that sort of links it, doesn't it? Is, is look for the positive and reframe it. Rather than, oh, you're so naughty and poor old mum and she just needs a glass of soap in your... Is, come on, let's make this fun. And seek the positive. Always try and seek the positive. I'm a glass half full person most of the time, so, I mean, I'm good at it. But it's just, it's just trying to diffuse situations. Avoid comparisons. Oh, my stars. Why can't you be more like your brother? Why is, you know, why, 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 why do you do it that way? It's, it's, it's just, comparisons make us feel 
not as good as. But also the thing is, is that um, comparisons are, and so, you know, I, I suppose this is a bit like sort of generalizations, but, the, you know, so things like, um, you should be more polite. Well, more polite than what? Oh God, I hate Wednesdays. Well, in comparison to what? Well, you know, what, what, what's, what's when, why is Wednesdays different? And it's just, but avoid, avoid trying to compare. It's a bit like labels. I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer that please, let's not give our kids labels. I was, um, I always felt average because I never received any labels. I can't remember, you know, in my, in my narrative of my childhood. Maybe I did, but I always felt that I never was good enough for any labels. Whereas my brother was the sporty one. He was head of cricket, rugby, football, fives. And this was all in primary school. And there was another one. He was head of house. He was head of school. He was the one that got the A grades. He was the clever one, the good looking one, the sporty one. And I felt compared to him, not by any intention of my parents, oh, he's so much better than her, but that's the way I, I read it, because I wasn't given a, a label. I wasn't the clever one, the sporty. I was just good and nice. So for a very long time, I tell, turned into a people pleaser because that's the only label I had. How very average and ordinary is that? So do avoid comparisons, do avoid labels, because they are so detrimental to your children's growth and upbringing. She says, speaking from experience, and it was only until I was, you know, 35, till I, no, it was, till I was 40, that I suddenly realized, oh, mm. because my I remember having a chat with my brother then, and he just, you know, uh, years, years later, he went, well, good luck with that one, because the pressure that I felt under was all these wonderful labels. So it cuts both ways. State your expectations when you are communicating. After your party, I would like you home by nine o'clock, please, because we're going to Granny's at 9.30. That is clarification, rather than I want you home by the morning. We need, if we don't set our expectations, then everyone is able to interpret it whichever way. And invariably it's never gonna be the same, is it? You know, um, oh, my assignment's due in sort of next week. Well, is that Monday? So we'll have to do it over the weekend. Or is that Friday? When is that? How much time have you got? You know, if it's, if it's due in on Thursday, well, that's, you know, don't forget you're tied up the whole of Wednesday. So it's, it's a matter of working out the expectations and being able to work out how that works in the scheme of things. Because stating your expectations allows for negotiation but it allows for clarity. Um, it, it, it avoids ambiguity. So wise, wise move always to, and, and, and repeat and just seek clarification. Just so, you know, what, what time, do you, what, do, you, do you remember what time I asked you to be back? And do you know why? Because then it's just someone, no, she's nagging. Do you know what I mean? It's just setting those expectations so everyone knows how the land lies. A good one, number six, I think. A good one is raise, replace but with and. Because when you say but, it negates the whole previous part of the sentence. Yeah, you did, you, you did okay in your test, but I wish you'd got 20 out of 20 instead of 15 out of 20. So that basically says, you did okay, but. 
that really means mm, that's not important. What's important is what I'm, my message is, which basically says, no, you weren't good enough. So 15 out of 20, you did, you did, you did okay. And maybe you'll get 16 or 17 next time. Maybe, you know, and there's still scope for improvement. But, but just, it, it just closes that conversation down really, you know, blah, 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 but. And it just says, yeah, that, the, the first part of that sentence, it wasn't really very interesting at all. Didn't, you know. Yes, I know, I know it was very good of you, but. No, I know it was very good of you and I really appreciate it. And perhaps, and keeps that flow going, keeps that conversation going. As I've said, avoid generalizations. Because generalizations create ambiguity. Avoid threats. Threats aren't so good because unless you are, well, many, t I, I, I remember um, when I was having my hair cut one day and this, um, my, the, the girl doing my hair, she said, um, Oh, yeah, it was ages ago, but it, I think it just came out to the Easter holidays, and she said, oh, my gosh, my kids, whenever they get into the back of the car, it was like World War II, and they screech and screech and screech, and I just had enough. So I said to them, if you go on one more time, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to take your phones away for the whole of the Easter holidays. And I looked at her and just laughed, and she went, I know. And I went, how'd that work out for you? And she went, no, it was appalling. And the thing is, is as soon as I said it, they knew and I knew it was nearly, it was unenforceable. So actually, she said, I'd lost all my power. Parenting shouldn't really be about control, whatever age. It should be about managing expectations and boundaries and guidance. But there we go. So avoid threats. Because when you can't see it through, you lose the power. And actually, in fairness, you know, threats are like punishments. And punishments build resentment and anger. And just if, you, if you're having to make if you're having to make a threat or a punishment, um, invariably what happens is um, you you've you've lost the middle ground. You've lost you've lost any bargaining power. Um, punishments and threats are, yes, actions have consequences, and that's why managing your expectations and talking about them earlier works so much better. So the language that you use does have a huge impact on um, how things turn out. I've, I addressed this in, uh, in my, uh, there's a whole chapter in my book on communication. And, um, you know, here's one example on page 82. Uh, I, it, there's a sort of some do's and don'ts on, on how to address conversations. And it's sort of, for, for an example here, you know, you, you're having a conversation with your child and they've got a problem. We, we do tend to jump in and try and sort of make everything better and invariably um, it's up to them to grow and work out how to sort their problems out with our guidance and with our language. And, you know, I know very often we try really, really hard to sort it all and make it so much better for them and they're not going to learn that way. So the language that we use can build resilience, build decision-making, build, just shape their emotional intelligence a bit more. You know, I've got a problem, let's say, I don't know, with my girlfriend or I'm, someone's bullying me at school or I, I, one of my mates is taking drugs or I'm, oh, sorry, with the mic, or um, I, I am um, struggling with my assignment. Well, what you don't say is, well, you need to do this. Because that's fine, but they don't learn. Try swapping that with, okay, well, what do you think your options are here? 
How do you think, what course of action could you take to make things a little bit easier? Because that opens up the conversation, that allows them to think on their feet, to manage their situation with your guidance, and that's what it's all about. That is what parenting is all about, is leading our children through the choppy waters of childhood and, and, and adolescence. And with our guidance, rather than with our, our, our rules and, and, and ex, you know, um, our diktats, it's a different world from that that we experience. And so it's important that our kids learn to navigate it with our support, but also with their own judgment and experiences because it equips them a hell of a lot better to deal with the big wide world out there. I hope that makes sense. As usual, leave any comments um, below if you have any comments or if this resonates with you, please share this video. Um, this was episode three and um, in the last episode of this series I'm talking all about trust and respect which forms a big part of communication, um, in, in any communication. But trust and respect, when lost, creates big breakdowns at home. In the meantime, it is my mission to support you parents so that together we can build a mentally ha happier and healthier generation, generation of young people. Much love. <laughs>